Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Is there anybody in this room that would like to make a difference? Can I hear you say, I? I. Everybody wants to make a difference. Everybody wants to count. But the truth of the matter is that it's not everybody who wants to make a difference that ends up making a difference. Who can tell me what is the difference? Now look at your neighbor and say, do you know who I am? If you know who I am today, you will buy me lunch on Tuesday. <laughs> let me, let me again honor this house. Let me again honor the leadership of this house for honoring and inviting me. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you. From my heart, I say thank you. I don't take it for granted. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Today, it is my honor to say to everyone that is standing here today that you will never remain the same. The world has said, sent a search party to look for people who can stand out and make a difference in times of uncertainty. Globally, there's a search party for leadership. Anybody that can stand out as a leader, his or her price will go up. You guys read economics. There's a law in economics that is a law of demand and supply. That law states that if a price, the demand of a commodity is high, what it means is that the price of that commodity goes up. Today, dollar is scarce. So the price of dollar has gone what? Has gone up. It's a secret that today, leaders are scarce. Leaders are scarce both in church and in where? In society. And when there is a scarcity for leadership, it's an opportunity for somebody, somewhere, to pay the price for leadership development. As soon as you do that, you show up in your organization, they notice you, your pricing goes up. So leadership is connected to economics. That's why one of my books I just finished writing is on Amazon, The Economics of Leadership. That, that means if you can grow your leadership capital, there can be economic benefit to you. Not just spiritual benefit, it will also amount to what? Economic benefit. So 30 years ago, at 19, only 19, the hunger for leadership development hit me. I will say in the spiritual language, God called me for leadership development for Nigeria. Because I was in Wolfby, Wolfby. I was in Wolfby, in the Wolfby class. And there's a particular course, Understanding Divine Direction. And I saw the book of Nehemiah for the first time of my life. And I read the book of Nehemiah and I saw how one man discomforted himself to start the journey for leadership and that transformed the entire Jerusalem. I read it back to back and I began to take out the important skills, leadership competencies he demonstrated. And I realized that it was those leadership competencies that made him stand out. And I began to cry. I cried for two days. And I began to ask God to give me a goal for life. And then, Godney was born. What I run today was born. So I can tell you that whichever you look at it from, it is going to be a message that is the 21st century message for the time. Get leadership right because I am standing right now 
on spiritual grounds that the church has done their spiritual work, right? I have brought my complementary dimension to support what the church has done. So I will stay on my own calling to do the dynamics of the work. So may I announce to you, how many persons are ready to go on a high level with me this morning? How many, how many, how many? How many, how many, how many? How many, how many, how many? You are ready to go. If you are ready to go, I want you to sit like a global leader. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. And so, remember, I will never forget that day. It was in the city of Oweri. I had invited Professor or Colin, the authority on leadership globally. At that time, Dr. Miles Monroe, may God bless his soul. May we celebrate that man. May we celebrate that man. And he was addressing 1,500 people in the city of Oweri. That was his first visit on my invitation. And Dr. Miles Monroe suddenly looked at the audience and said, Linus, do you know that there are over 5,000 definitions of leadership? But the one that I'm excited about is the one I created a few days ago. And I quote him. He said, he said, leadership is the ability to inspire, motivate, drive a group of people towards a particular direction via inspiration, not intimidation or manipulation. Can I go over it again? He said, leadership is the ability to do what? To inspire motivates, drive a group of people towards where? A particular direction via inspiration, not intimidation or manipulation. At the heart of that definition is something you could refer to as five elements in that definition alone. So what it means is that Nothing happens until somebody jumps out, initiates something to happen. When a room is dirty and everybody walks into that room, the first person goes in the room and says, what a dirty room, and gets out of that room in anger. The second person walks into that room, says, what a dirty room, but I'll manage, and sits in the dirty room. And the third person walks into that room and says, what a dirty room, but I can do something about this. Takes a broom and sweeps that room. I want you to tell me, amongst three of them, who is the leader? What? The third one, right? It is even possible that the first one who walked into that room is a titled man. Which means... He wears the cap of the leader, which means he is in position of leadership. And that means that positions of leadership do not make you a leader. That you're a church worker does not make you a leader. <laughs> it only gives you an opportunity to do what? To show leadership. For those of you who carry title about, do you know I'm head of department? You know there are people like that. Everything you discuss, he said, do you know? Have you forgotten I'm head of department? So you don't, you don't ask for it. It is given to you when you show leadership. So the third guy shows leadership, which means leadership does not just happen until somebody makes it happen. Somebody has to make it happen. That is why in period where there is no leadership, 
Society stands still. Progress only occurs when men and women with vision, skills, and courage seize the opportunity to change things for the better. Nothing happens in your department until you show up. There must be an initiation of a change process. Does that make sense? So at the heart of that definition is that somebody would have to make it happen. And in some other element of the definition, I will come back to that. But I want to begin to move to the next level of the conversation, which is my characteristics of a 21st century leader. Remember, we are building the blocks on how we're going to be, first of all, become leaders. Then we can have the capacity to now stay motivated in challenging times. Because if you are a, not a leader, challenging times will take you along as they come. <laughs> challenging times, they have capacity to do what? To take a follower along. They'll carry you as they come. But if you display quality leadership, which are dimensions I'm taking you through right now, I will show you then how you can sustain your relevance even in challenging times. How you can stay motivated even in challenging times. So the first characteristics of a 21st century leader is to become a multiplier. The 21st century leader, ladies and gentlemen, is a multiplier. What's the concept of somebody being a multiplier? To be a multiplier means that if anyone comes around you, walks around you, anyone who has the opportunity of working with you is optimized at all times because of you. Which means you have the capacity to take people from where they are to where they need to be. So people work with you through mentorship, through coaching, and through other engagement. You take them, carry them from where they are, and they become extraordinary leaders because they work with you. They multiply. Have you ever worked with a leader that diminishes you? <laughs> Do you know what I mean by that? That you work with somebody and you doubt yourself. Oh, come on. As a result of the bullying process, you doubt yourself. One day you say, am I, am I a human being? As a result of working with people, one woman had an opportunity to engage two former prime ministers of England. And one of those prime ministers, David Gladstone, the other was Benjamin Disraeli. And so they asked her, you know what she said? She said, they asked her, can she describe these two leaders? And she said, whenever you are with David Gladstone, it looks like David Gladstone is the most intelligent man ever. But if you are with Benjamin Disraeli, it looks like you are the most outstanding person in the whole earth. Who can understand the implication of that? What's the implication of that? What's the implication of that? Benjamin Disraeli makes you feel you are worthy. Nobody will ever forget the way you make them feel. The way you make people feel can extend their capacity to lead. Leaders must understand these dynamics that as a leader, you must have enough emotional intelligence 
to be able to deal with all manner of humans because the multiplier has high regard for humans. Humans are assets to the multiplier. The multiplier says, once you have signed under me, under my department, it's my responsibility to ensure that you fulfill your God-given capacity under me. You will not cry under me. Do you understand what I'm saying? I will create an opportunity for you to grow and be optimized. The power optimization makes the human become so powerful in terms of production that you begin to imagine what will just happen. So those who are, by the way, let me even remind you that 60% of humans who walk in the surface of the earth are not optimized. 60% of human beings who work in church, who work in business, who work in politics are not optimized. Optimized. 60%. 35% of humans within those systems are partially optimized, which means today they look like they've got it. Tomorrow you're wondering who brought this guy in my team. So they exist in the realm of what we have termed to call packaging. Abuja is the center of what? Repeat that, repeat that, repeat that. <laughs> Abuja is the only place or one of the cities where you see a young man in Transcorp Hilton. He wears a babariga, young man. As he's networking with people. Hello, nice to meet you. I am the executive assistant to the chairman Senate committee of oil and gas downstream. He said, you, you're a businessman. Wow, you're excited. I've met this guy. I've seen a connection. He says, let's go for lunch. You go for lunch, you pay for his lunch. <laughs> Day two, he says, the senator has traveled. He will return on Monday. I will introduce the senator to you. You say, okay, ah, let me put you in Transcorp. At least you can spend a weekend in Transcorp. He said, that would be a nice idea. <laughs> Meanwhile, in the real sense of it, this guy is not even, he is not even the PA to the SA to the SA to the SA of the senator. But he has packaged himself through. By the time it downs on you, you have spent a lot. I don't know if anybody has experienced that before in this town. Anybody? Only 5% of humans are optimized. Five. 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 Who wants to be in that 5%? Five. That 5%, those are, those are guys who become transformational leaders. The 5%. So if I work with you and you help me, in the process of my optimization. What it means is that you have become a multiplier. That was why the people who worked with David, if you remember David in scripture, people, most of them were ordinary people. They were ordinary people, most of them. They were unknown men. But by the time they have finished working with David, they have become generous, true of us. Generous, top leaders. That one, even when David just said, I need to drink water, what, just, just uttering that word, they broke into the camp of the enemy, the most dangerous place ever, to go and do what? That's what happens when a leader invests in humans. They become irreplaceable. They become like mini-gods. That's what happens. You have not invested, you are demanding. So every leader must understand those dimensions. Who wants to be a multiplier? Nobody grows lower 
or diminishes under you. Everybody works under you must what? That's a multiplier, number one. Number two, characteristics of a 21st century leader. Every 21st century leader must be a change maker. Tell your neighbor a change maker. You can't sign up for the workforce if you don't want to be a change maker. <laughs> no, 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 no. The, the, being a change maker means that anytime you walk into a mandate, you are given an assignment. That assignment must come with new dimensions of innovations. That by the time you are through, it changes the atmosphere, changes everything because you are involved. When I'm involved in an assignment, it means that that assignment must be executed with what? All time most what? Intensity. That when I'm done, you must see visible change. Anytime you are given an appointment, some of us here, we occupy positions in our offices. What it means is that by the time I'm done in four years within this organization, there must be what? Visible what? Change. Otherwise, you have just taken a walk. Otherwise, you have just wasted time. The world is looking for impact makers. The world is looking for change agents. In your family, you can be a first change agent that they ever have. So any leader must have that in his mind. I'm running for this political office because I want to be what? A change maker. And if you are looking for change makers, where do you find them? Where do you find them? The earlier creature, they are waiting for the manifestations of what? The sons of God. You can't manifest if you're not a change agent. You can't. So leaders are change makers. I was coaching a team of bankers top bankers, and somebody shared a story with me. He said I was posted to a particular branch that was considered a dead zone. Everybody, they were running away from being posted there. You know, one of the most interesting things that happens in civil service, in police, in army, in some of these institutions is that the, when posting is about to come, some people become what? Frightened. Why? They don't want to be posted to places in court where there is nothing. So this guy was posted in nothingness. So the guy accepted the posting and built his strategy went there with force and power, with vision, and transformed that place. So that place became a center where there was a lot of resources there. You know what happened? They started lobbying to post the guy out of the place. That's I, you posted me to a place, nothing was happening. I went there, became a change agent, transformed the place. Now you're lobbying for me to be posted out so you can come to where things that's why people like finished product finish i want to marry a husband that is already made well <laughs> there's there's this comfort and the worst thing that is happening right now i see young men too they say they want to marry women already made i see that to go that's a new concept too already made what is already made you already made as, as you can't be a change agent when you just appear in a place everything is available so you must be a creator of value the marketplace doesn't recognize any other thing except value the marketplace does not recognize six packs don't you say I have six packs Six packs is for sports. <laughs> when you want to play a role in sports, 
is, 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 or you want to be fit. Fit. It's, it's just fitness. So, 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 so I'm looking for somebody with six packs. The marketplace doesn't understand that. If you want to doubt what I'm saying, go and ask what happened to Mr. Biggs. <laughs> How many of you went to Mr. Biggs? What happened to Tantalizer? The marketplace is mean. Very mean. It's either you come with value and you have market shares. You have more. Or you come with that value, you are thrown out. Let's assume you came with value yesterday. If you don't sustain the value today, boom, the marketplace throws you out. It looks like because the church is a place of all comers. Yeah? So you say, I'm a church worker. Therefore, if you're a church worker, what does that mean? The implication is that I have to step up my game. So that if there's a competition for best singers in the world, right, I'll come from church, I'll compete in the best singer systems, even if they are society people, and I will emerge winner because of my excellence. That's what I mean. So the marketplace is a place of value. That's why many years ago, when I made up my mind that I would be a global speaker and leader. I started early to say every year I must go out anywhere in the world. I will fetch three, three times a year. I must develop myself three times a year. Three times. It doesn't matter how much it will cost me. I must do it every year. Because I run a show on AIT that runs Monday to Friday for the past 10 years. It's called Leadership Clinic with Linus Okore. So if I don't, if I don't, and I don't repeat something twice, it's every day, one slot, one shot every day. If I don't develop myself, what happens to me? I go dry. And Leadership Clinic has become a bestseller because I have gotten jobs just by, I, I'm, your fan, I'm your fan, and checks are going out. I'm your fan, and I'm smiling. Oh, you're my fan? Thank you, thank you, thank you. But what is going on? So value, consistently delivered, gets feedback. And that feedback, most times, reward. So the second thing, BH, how many persons want to be a change agent here? You show your leadership by your ability to be a change agent. Number three, number three, every 21st century leader is a lover of value, values. Remember, I said value before. Now I said values. It's a lover of what? Values. Values shape nations. Any nation that does not have core values that they respect and hold dear, that nation can make progress. Abraham Lincoln prayed a prayer and he said, Oh God, may men and women of values become our principal men and women. May men of principles become our principal men. Do you understand? So values shape progress. Culture shapes progress. So I don't know individually, you are a leader. Is there anybody here, you have your four core values that you can mention 10 times, even if you are sleeping, you can mention the four values. Anybody here? You have created your personal core values that you cannot play with. You can't compromise those core four values. Can I see your hand? Anybody in this room? Anybody? Yes. Yes. Yes, sir. Number one. What? Desire. Number two. Direction. Direction. Number three. Diligence. Number four. Determination. Determination. Who else? Five. Discipline. Discipline. 